you can accept who you are now and you can look back on how you were raised and still appreciate that because it made you the person you are today and you can love yourself who you are today. But you do need to go back and you need to reparent that little boy inside you that had that hurt and that was injured. And so when he said that, man, it like I had a physical reaction in my chest. It hit me in a really weird way. I could talk about a lot of different things. I've been an entrepreneur for a really long period of time and that's obviously comes with its own set of challenges, failed businesses, just bad choices, all that stuff. But I feel like maybe something that people would resonate with was growing up, um, like my, I was just never felt comfortable in my skin. I didn't like how I looked. I didn't like how I felt. And in fact, I remember this one time in high school, Matt, when this girl I was crushing on, Christine Jeffries, who was a hottie for show, she came up to me and she was like, hey, Nate, can I see your arms? And I was like, are you talking about Big Dub Diesel? Or are you talking about DeBoss? Like, All right, girl, like, what's up? And so she she looks at me and she turns to her friend Michelle and she goes, see, I told you his arms were smaller than yours. And I was like, oh, Christine, oh. Oh, you do that to me. Oh. So I pulled the dagger out of my heart and um, I was like, well, I guess I have to work out now. And so I, until I look like Arnold Schwarzenegger and no one can ever hurt me with those words again. So I felt like if I have enough neck tattoos, a big enough beard and enough uh, muscle armor, like I was going to not be able to be hurt was kind of the, I, I wouldn't have put it in those words as like, as an, a 12 year old, but you know, looking back there, like that was the trauma. That was something that I always had, I was working through. So I did every, every diet I did. I did all the exercises in the gym. I never really got results. And like, I was so obsessed with it, Matt, that I, I got a job as a personal trainer. And I was like, I'm going to figure this out. Whether, whether like what, whether it kills me or not, I'm going to figure out how I can actually look and feel confident in my skin. It was a, yeah. just a big, I was obsessed. Fast forward a few years, I'm, I'm in Seattle. I'm working as a trainer there. And this website reaches out to me because I've been done, doing some blogging and stuff at the time. And they were like, hey, can you write us an article about nutrition? I was like, sure. And they're like, but not about fat loss and not about muscle gain, which is kind of what I've been talking about previously. They're like, write us about how you can have all day energy through your nutrition. And I was like, all right, that's weird, but sure. So I delved into some of the research. I, I followed up with a couple of people who I, who I thought were really great experts in nutrition in the field. And what I found was super surprising because all these things that I'd heard, eat six meals per day, stoke your metabolic furnace. You got to make sure you're eating this many grams of carbs. You got to be eating like, have like oatmeal for breakfast. They all turned out to be not optimal when you start prioritizing your body's natural energy or what I call biorhythms. Okay. So how do you work with your body rather than against it? So I read okay. this article. It was, it was like fairly successful and I started using this in my own life. And what I noticed was that what previously I felt like I'd always been banging my head against a wall to get these results, it just became like effortless. So I was, I was, had more energy during the day. My body changed a lot, a lot easier. The clients that started following this method got better results faster because we were no longer focusing on tracking calories, cutting things out, it's like white knuckling our ways, but instead focusing on how do we have like vibrant energy all day long, show up big for our families and our, and our friends. And that seemed like that was a one like big challenge that I always had that seemed to shift into an opportunity to kind of teach people. And that kind of became my mission. It's showing people how do you eat in a way that helps you get leaner, live longer and be legendary. And that was one of the big things that I saw. I was like, okay, well, if you want to get more done, you got to eat less because if you, and so like, and then a follow up to that, Matt, which is crazy is that from an evolutionary perspective, we are more focused we have better hand-eye coordination. We have better um, short-term to long-term memory retention, and we have better um, better res like responsiveness in our visual cortex when we are a little bit hungry, huh. because that aids us in hunting, right? You know, like you think about Thanksgiving. You're not like after you finish Thanksgiving dinner, and someone's like, "Hey, you want to go play pickup basketball?" You're like, "Actually, I'm gonna watch the Detroit Lions lose at football," and you do that. <laughs> you had to throw that in there. <laughs> So yeah. I don't know, like when you're doing those fasts, I really love to, to encourage my clients to do a 24 or 48 hour fast every single week. 48 is a bit more aggressive in terms of like, you want more rapid fat loss, but I think everyone should be fasting 24 hours a week. I like that even better than the 16 hour, 16, eight intermittent fast. These okay. go, I call these prolonged fast as like a, just a minute difference. But basically, like you said, you feel sharper because you have unlimited mental focus and your body is, is evolutionarily responding to like, give you the, like the cognition to track animals better and be a better hunter, provide for your family, provide for yourself. It's because your body wants you to live. So if you think about how do we work with our body's natural tendencies and our rhythms to give us what we need in, in the 21st century, 
if, are we still in the 21st century? I'm not sure. So yeah, I think we are. Yeah. But if, yeah, so like, you know, I know we're not out really hunting woolly mammoths, but like, how do you show up big on a zoom call? How do you show up as like the best dad possible? How do you lead your teams and your businesses? Well, like by having more focus, by having more cognition and, and by being a little bit hungry and reframing that I'm a little hungry into being, I'm a lot more focused can be a really powerful mental way of doing this. And then kind of to your point about being hungry, just make sure you are hydrated and you have plenty of electrolytes. Coffee and tea are always good, but uh, electrolytes can really solve a lot of those problems for you. So honestly, even after I had adopted this method and I like, all, like all things considered, you know, I got compliments on my physique. People would talk about it. I like, I, you know, I'd done a couple of photo shoots and stuff like that. I still wasn't happy with how I looked. Yeah. And at that point I realized that it's not about necessarily even how I looked. It was about how I viewed myself, some of my internal agreements with myself and some like just operating from a place of, of negativity, of scarcity and like, and running from this fear. My whole life I was skinny fat, which I like, you know, I had a little bit of, like had a belly, had small arms, just felt really self-conscious about how I looked. Yeah. So much so that when that like, and I think the gym is filled with like jacked dudes who are still hurt little boys. And it wasn't until I started really being like, okay, well, what does my energy bring to the table? How am I using this as a, as a catalyst to help other people? How am I taking someone else who's a leader in their company and showing them how to bring more life, inject more enthusiasm into what they're doing? And mm -hmm. at that point, my paradigm shifted a little bit. And so rather than running away from this fear I had of not being enough, not being good enough, um, people judging me like, oh, I'm a personal trainer, but I only look like X, you know, I was able to let go of some of those, those fears, insecurities, and frankly, agree unconscious agreements I had with myself. You're, you're, you're like, you're not good enough. You're too skinny. No one's going to listen to you and start like pursuing like the, the passion side of things. So how do I get away from the fear and start like running towards the development and the growth? And once that shifted, it was, I'm not gonna say everything changed because largely nothing changed, but how I felt about myself, how much I enjoyed the process um, and my ability to stick to something. So rather than like beating myself up because I ate a piece of pizza, I'd be like, great, I'm going to have that piece of pizza and it's going to fuel my workouts. I got some extra calories. I'm going to use that. I'm going to push myself. It's going to be an amazing day. Uh, Joshua Renner said was that, Hey, you can, you can accept, you can accept who you are now. And you can look back on how you were raised and still appreciate that because it made you the person you are today. And you can love yourself who you are today but you do need to go back and you need to reparent that little boy inside you that had that hurt. And that was, that was injured. And so, um, when he said that, man, it like, it, it, like I had a physical reaction in my chest. I was like, Oh, like, like it hit me in a really weird way. And I just had this image of myself sitting at Balboa park in San Diego, the, like the roller coaster place. And my dad had just yelled at me for something. I don't even remember what it was. But I remember he yelled at me. I was sitting on the bench waiting for everyone to finish the roller coaster and my neck was killing me. And one of the agreements that I think I took away from that, because my, like my parents split up, I was always told to be the man of the house. I was told to protect, protect everybody around me and stuff was that I had to be perfect. I have to be 100% on all the time. I have to be perfect. I have to show up like 100% for everyone in my life. That's my role. And um, so I was sharing this kind of, epiphany or this like visual that I had with a seven dudes who I did not know and met for the first time at lunch that day. And man, and I, and I was like, just kind of talking through this. Cause we were all sharing what we had taken away from the morning. And, I, and someone was like, what would you go back and say to that, to that boy sitting on the park bench? And I was like, I would tell him, Hey, you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be Nate. And Matt, I started bawling. I just started crying. And I was like, I'm sorry. And they're like, don't say sorry let like let out like this is a safe space and i i don't cry i'm i'm a tough guy right um i have yeah. tattoos and i was just so shaken by this and it was so powerful to like speak those words that i think i think it's like that's an important reminder that like hey i don't be perfect and you know what my oldest daughter who is amazing does not have to be perfect either she's a 4 year old she all she has to do is be rena and I can't hold her to that perfection standard because I'm not perfect. No one's perfect. And, and it like, and she doesn't need to, that's not her role. That's not her job. Mm -hmm. And it's also not my job as the parent to be perfect. You know, the, the biggest thing that I want to be to my, to my kids and my family is centered and grounded. 
I feel like that's the gift I would love to like the gift I would love to leave them with and the legacy that I would like to like, let, you know, share with them is like, you can come to me with whatever and I'm going to, I'm going to take it in. I'm going to be calm, be patient. Like I'm going to be a safe space for you. And I don't think I necessarily had that growing up. I always felt like a little bit on my own, a little bit of like, a, so if I have that place where like, I can just bring that grounded and like centered, strong foundation to my wife, to my two kids. I think that's like beyond anything else. That's probably one thing I would love to leave them with. And that's mm-hmm. something I, a gift I work on trying to improve for them every day. 